All right, so we're gonna look at new second law of motion with graphing applications. Um, like I said, this is a, this for an experiment, this would be a, a more than logical choice for them to um, make one of these problems on an AP test. And so what you have here, so this is the setup. It's, it's one of those labs that I, you know, I, I don't remember doing it in the 80s, but when I first started teaching, you get these lab notebooks and I would take these lab notebooks and I would look at labs and I'd be like, trying to remember when I was a student that I liked doing this lab. And this was one of those labs that I thought, man, high school, like this would be great for middle school, but for high school kids, um, while it's probably the best lab there is to do it, just wasn't that exciting. Basically what you do is you take a cart like that, you hook a string um, to it. We What we would do is on the left-hand side, we would have a pulley with weights attached to the string, right? And we would put different weights there and you would hold the trolley still. Somebody would time, we'd mark off on the table like a certain amount of distance, like a meter, maybe two meters if we had the space. And then you would let it go and you would, so you would have an applied force, which would be the, the weight hanging over here, right? And then we would measure the time to go from point A to point B. Usually what we would do is we would use this equation, right? Because we're measuring the time. This would be zero. This would be a meter or something big enough that our reaction time wouldn't really make the data awful. And so this we this would be a constant. This we would measure with stopwatches, or if we had photo gates, so these wouldn't fit through the photo gate. But if we had something a little better, and then we would calculate the acceleration, right? So envision this as you'll see some other pictures of the same idea, but this would be the experiment that we would do. Um, there's some simulations on it, but I don't know if we're gonna if we're gonna do those. Um, but we would use this to solve for the acceleration that we're getting right here. Right, and the force would equal the weight. So again, imagine this comes over. Okay, there's my pulley. Right here's the the table. Pulley's attached there. Here you've got the weight. You're adding more weights means more force. This is going to go faster. Right, it's going to increase its acceleration. We're going to measure off that distance. Right, and that's the experiment. So now. Here's your data, right? We want to graph this data. So you probably don't have graph paper in front of you because I didn't know we were going to do this today and didn't tell you to get graph paper. But um, try to get some graph paper so that on Thursday you can do the bell work question. Or if you know how to use Excel, that's awesome. Um, I might try to do that with you guys if possible at the same time without goofing this up. Or use your graphing calculator, right? And so here's your, your six sets of data. Um, so you got to figure out how, how you're going to graph this first, right? And so we're applying more force. We're changing the acceleration. What are we keeping constant? Well, we're keeping, right, the mass of the trolley constant. <clears throat> and so this lab would come in two parts. First part is we would put, we'd either just use the mass of the trolley or you'd put some mass on top of the trolley and you'd apply more and more force. And you'd see it go faster and faster and faster, and your times would get smaller and smaller and smaller, right? So it's it's a very logical um, lab to do. It's just not that exciting. Um, so the first part is we're going to graph this data above. Um, I know. Well, I'll come right back to it, but I just want to show you what it would say next. So the graph shows that below a certain force, there's no acceleration. Find the value of this force. A force smaller than that is applied to the stationary trolley. Suggest what effect the force has on the trolley. Find the mass of the trolley, right? So these are the kind of the, you'll see like uh, the two I assigned to you today um, for homework. And I think the other one that's on here, and maybe there's two on here, um, is essentially ask you the same question each time. But to do it first, you gotta graph it. So one of those three ways, hopefully you can you can graph it.
Let me know when you guys have the graph in front of you or on your graphing calculator or Excel or whatever you're graphing them. Here's the questions. <clears throat> Give me a thumbs up when you got it graphed because I've graphed it already. So when I graph it, I'll come back to the slide, but when I graph it, hopefully you got the data. It looks like this, right? So I graphed it like this. Why did I graph it like this? Because we know acceleration is dependent upon the force. So, right, dependent variable goes on the y-axis. Independent variable goes down here. Um, right, here's my equation. So obviously the slope is the key, right? But this is also a key. Um, well, your graph should look like that. It should be linear, okay? You know, depending on if you're using a Casio or a TI or if you graphed it, what have you. So the graph shows that below a certain force, there's no acceleration. Find the value of this force. How am I gonna find that answer? Looking at my graph, what am I gonna do? What's the key feature there? Nope, not slope. What else could it be? Let me go to the graph, right? So find the value of this. Right? The graph shows that below a certain force, there's no acceleration. Where is there no acceleration, right? No acceleration. Yep, intercept. But normally we think y-intercept, right? Because that's the y-intercept which means it's down here somewhere, but we want this, right? So it's a guesstimate. Obviously this is not great. Um, I would assume it's, now the, the, this, I think this was a, um, this might've been an IV question from years ago, but normally what they do is they, they give you a, like a range. So they'll say something like um, 0 0.8 to 1.2 Newtons, right? And then they'll give you their answer like this. Right, I've seen that done on AP tests, IV tests, things like that. Um, but essentially, we're looking for what is that number to, the, you know, depending on how accurate your graph was. Um, I would say one newton would be reasonable, give or take a couple. And I would, you know, especially based on the scale that we have here, it's not exactly like we should have. When I made this, I should have made this three and maybe even two point five and two point seven or three point five or what have you. Um, but that would be the idea, right? Understanding that when Right, when is, um, when is there no acceleration? Find the value of this force. Now, a force smaller than that is applied to the trolley, stationary trolley, right? So it's not moving, um, but we start applying a force smaller than that, suggests what effect this force has on the trolley. All right, so these, the, those two questions are really good conceptual questions. So it means we're applying a force anywhere in this area, less than this amount. It's not moving. What's going to happen? 
what would happen? Somebody brave soul, put it in the chat. What do you think would happen? We apply it, so right here's, we know that this, this when the acceleration is zero, this is the force applied. Any force greater than one Newton causes the car to accelerate. So if we apply a force between zero and one Newton to the car, it's sitting on your table right in front of you. You start pushing on it with a force, anything less than one Newton, what's the car gonna do? Excellent, nothing, right? Isn't that great when that can be your answer? Nothing, why is it gonna be nothing? We have to over, we have to have an unbalanced force to cause acceleration to make it start moving. We have to overcome friction, right? And so any force in this range, not gonna do anything to it, right? It's not, and the key to that word, the key, the whole key to the problem, right, is this. It's a stationary trolley to begin with, right? It's not moving. It's inertia is at rest. It wants to stay at rest. To make it move, we have to overcome friction to make it move. And when we when we do that, right, when we apply a force greater than one newtons, it's not going to be moving at a constant velocity. It's got to accelerate to start moving, right? And then if we keep applying a greater force than one newton, then obviously we see that it's going to accelerate. So that's excellent. Now the last part, right? What do we do with graphs? Well, we do slope. Find the mass of the trolley. So how do we use the graph to help us do that? Well, what you would do is you would say, okay, slope equals change in y over change in x. And you would pick two points on your graph, right? Which hopefully you could do depending on how you do it, right? So adding more grid lines makes it a lot easier when you use Excel, which again, I did not do the greatest job when I made this, whenever I made this. Um, but you want to find a point, you know, that you can easily determine exactly what the number is. I don't really have any of those. I guess I can use this point. Right, I would use that point as one of the points because that's going to be about 0.25 and 2. And then somewhere up in here, find another point that, you know, is kind of easy to figure out. Um, all right, let's just say this. It doesn't have to be exact, all right? Those are my two points. And so if the acceleration is two minus, I'm gonna call that, I guess, 0.25. And then this is going to be trickier, right? It's not gonna be as accurate as I'd like it to be, but I'm gonna call it 9.5, even though it might not be quite where we want it to be. And that one is obviously two, right? And, but it, again, it would give you a range. It's, it, it's more important, you know, that you picked points on your line. And I get, right, point. And so obviously I had Excel do it for me there. But even just doing what I did, I got 0.233. So that's, you know, as much as I was not feeling it was very accurate, it's not that far off. Now the units, meters per second squared over a Newton. Now, what are we trying to find? We're trying to find the mass, right? And so part of the points to that problem would be for you doing this, right? That would be worth on an AP test, maybe two points. Um, maybe for me, three points, depending on what, I, what else we had to do. But let's look at the question again. Find the mass of the trolley. So if we know F equals MA and there's no, um, we don't think about friction, right? And we want to know the mass of the trolley. Um, we know that acceleration equals force over mass. Well, what did we graph? acceleration over force, right? Our slope is acceleration over force. That's not equal to the mass, right? Because if I solve this for M, 
it is f over a. f over a, I have a over f, right? And so the, the key to this would be is to say, all right, well, if I know m uh, mass equals force over acceleration, but I did this in the graph, I know that the mass is going to equal the inverse of the slope. And so, right, either this or if I used Excel, the 0.23 either way is good enough. 0.23 meters per second squared per Newton. So if I take the inverse of 0.23, right, I get about 4.29. So 4.3, this is getting worse and worse. Right, and now I have Newtons over meters per second squared, which is a kilogram. And so the mass is 4.3 kilograms. Yep, 0.25 would work. Right, and so imagine, you let's say you get two points for the slope, right? You'd get points obviously for creating the graph or sometimes like some of the questions, um, the graph's already created for you and then you just it takes that piece out of it. Um, but then understanding that this, right, this is the key, and then this would be a key, and that would probably be another two points. So that might be worth like four points, um, right? This would probably be only one, one point, maybe two, but probably one. And then I would say this would probably be worth two points, like on an AP test, right? Understanding that, um, it's not going to have any effect. It's not going to move because you have to overcome, um, you know, apply an unbalancing force that's greater than one newton to make it accelerate. Questions on that? 